Hello everyone, it's New York Railfan202 here, and today we are going to continue Engine of the Metro North, this time by talking about some of the work locomotives that Metro North has used throughout its history. This will be part one of a two-part episode. In part one, we will discuss all of Metro North's retired work locomotives, and in part two, we will discuss all of Metro North's currently used work locomotives. That means that in part one, we will discuss the Alco RS3M, the EMG GP9 and GP8, and the GE B23-7. In part two, we will discuss the EMG GP35Rs and BL14 CGs. First, we will discuss the history of each work locomotive, and then we will discuss how Metro North used them. Now without further ado, let's get started. In 1941, the American Locomotive Company, or ALCO, unveiled the road switcher model, which was different to previously produced diesel electric locomotives. Rather than a car body that extended the full width of the frame, the new road switcher type had external walking platforms on all sides of the locomotive for ease of access. Alco unveiled this new style on their RS-1, or Road Switcher 1. The engine had a 539T prime mover with 1,000 horsepower, and with the model proving popular with railroads around the country, Alco started their production run of 456 units for various railroads around the world. In the coming years, other locomotive manufacturers, such as GE, EMD, Fairbanks Morris, and Baldwin, would enter the road switcher market with their own models, and Alco's original road switcher was falling out of fashion. So in 1949, Alco unveiled their RS2, or Road Switcher 2, which used an updated 244B Alco Prime Mover with 1,500 horsepower. With competitors again improving and increasing the horsepower of their road switcher models, Alco needed to again update their road switcher model to remain relevant in the competitive road switcher market. Alco then unveiled the RS-3, or Road Switcher 3, with an updated V12 Alco 244D prime mover with 1600 horsepower. Alco would end up producing 1418 RS-3s and the model was decently successful, but four years later, EMD unveiled the much more appealing GP9 with 1750 horsepower. With EMD becoming the leader of the road switcher market, Alco decided to focus on other things and ended all production of the road switchers in 1956. Problems were still to come for the Alco road switchers, as the Alco 244 prime movers found in the RS2s and 3s were extremely unreliable. Many railroads had the prime movers of their Alco road switchers replaced to keep them in service as the cab and frame designs of the engines were still good. Penn Central did know differently, and in 1972, Penn Central began rebuilding their Alco road switchers at their DeWitt shops in Syracuse, New York. Penn Central chose to retrofit the units with EMD 567 prime movers from various retired EMD passenger locomotives. These prime movers had the same power output as the Alco ones, but the reliability of these units was greatly increased. Penn Central designated them as RS2 and 3Ms, with the M meaning modified. Rail fans preferred the name DeWitt Jeeps as they were modified at DeWitt shops with engines from the EMD General Purpose or Jeep series. When Penn Central filed for bankruptcy in 1971, the company was restructured several times by the federal government to try and keep the company afloat, but this was to no avail, and as the federal government saw the need for a freight railroad in the northeastern United States, Conrail was created, a government corporation to take over from Penn Central. The change happened in 1976, and at that time, all locomotives and equipment rostered by Penn Central were now property of Conrail, including the RS3Ms rebuilt by the railroad. Moving on to the next work locomotive Metro North rostered, which was a strong competitor to the Alco Road Switcher, the Electromotive Diesel or EMD General Purpose Series of locomotives. EMD unveiled their first Road Switcher type locomotive in 1949 and named it the General Purpose Series of locomotives. EMD's first in this series was the GP7, which had an EMD 567B prime mover with 1,500 horsepower. And the railroads were extremely impressed with the model, but Alco's road switchers were still on par with the GP7. And EMD wanted to expand further into the competitive road switcher market. So in 1954, the company unveiled the next locomotive in the general purpose series of locomotives, the GP9, which had an EMD 567C prime mover with 1,750 horsepower, which was considerably more than the competition could offer. EMD would go on to produce 3,446 GP9 locomotives for various railroads around the world, 
while Alco would exit the Rhodes Witcher market. EMD would go on to continue production with their general purpose series of locomotives to this day, with even more variants. The GP9s were purchased by all three railroads that made up Penn Central, with Penn Central inheriting 464 on its inception. Just like with the RS3Ms, when Penn Central was taken over by the government organization Conrail, all locomotives, including its GP9s, were now the property of Conrail upon its inception in 1976. The next locomotive that we will be taking a look at is from General Electric. General Electric entered the railroad industry with its universal series of locomotives in 1956 to compete with the Electromotive Diesel's general purpose series of locomotives. As EMD was expanding and improving their general purpose series of locomotives, General Electric was doing the same with their universal series of locomotives, as the road switcher market was extremely lucrative and competitive. Rather than keep expanding their universal series of locomotives, General Electric unveiled the Dash 7 series of locomotive in 1977, with the first in the series being the GE B23-7. The GE B23-7 was a four-axle road switcher locomotive with a GE FDL-12 prime mover with 2,700 horsepower. General Electric would end up producing 537 units for the railroads around the world. Conrail leased 141 GE B23-7s directly from General Electric. Now for the final work locomotive I'll be covering in this episode, the EMD GP8. In the 1970s, the Illinois Central Railroad found themselves with a surplus of EMD GP7 and GP9 locomotives. Rather than purchase new general purpose series locomotives from EMD, the railroad decided to rebuild their surplus older general purpose locomotives to match the specifications of the EMD produced general purpose locomotives of the time. The railroad would rebuild 111 of their GP7 and GP9 locomotives throughout the decade at the railroad's Purdue, Kentucky shops. These new locomotives would be classified as GP8s and would be very similar to the GP10 and GP11 locomotives being produced by EMD at the time. Conroe found themselves in possession of a surplus of EMD GP7 and GP9 locomotives, just like the Illinois Central Railroad had, and with the need for reliable power, Conrail also decided to rebuild their locomotives. The railroad selected the Illinois Central Gulf Railroad's Purdue, Kentucky shop to perform the work in 1976. At the shop, the short high hood noses were chopped for better visibility and the control stands were set up for the new short hood lead operation. The prime movers were overhauled and all former GP7s received the 567BC while the GP9s received the 567Cs. Air filter work was also performed, outfitting the Jeeps with new Dynacell paper air filters. Nine GP8 units were turned out during the third quarter of 1976, wearing new Conrail paint. 16 GP10s were released. By 1978, Conrail desired more from the rebuild program and selected another 39 GP7s to be rebuilt. This program was not extensive as the original, consisting of only mechanical and electrical work. The dynamic brakes were removed and the control stand remained set up for long hood forward operation. Paduke was not the only shop contracted this time around. The work was split between the Chicago, Rock Island and Pacific Silvis, Illinois shop, Morrison Nudes in Boise, Idaho shop, and the Illinois Central Gulf Railroad's Purdue, Kentucky shops. These units returned to Conrail during the third quarter of 1978. 59 GP9s were also sent out for rebuilding in 1978, split between the Illinois Central Gulf Railroad Purdue, Kentucky shops, Morrison Knudsen in Boise, Idaho, and the Precision National Corporation in Mount Vernon, Illinois. This was the first rebuilding PNC had undertaken, and after the sixth unit, Conrail terminated the PNC contract due to quality and delivery issues. The remainder of the PNC's contract was given to Paduke. The same work, electrical and mechanical, was done by early 1979, and Morrison Knudsen also turned out 17 units. Now, we will get into how the units were used on Metro North. In 1971, when Penn Central filed for bankruptcy, the New York government started funding the railroad's commuter route. The state also purchased passenger equipment to operate the services, but as the tracks were owned by Penn Central, the railroad was responsible for maintenance of way and switching duties, so the state did not have a need for work or switching locomotives. This also continued when Penn Central filed for bankruptcy and Conrail took over commuter service on Metro North's lines. Even though the MTA now had control over the tracks, the maintenance and switching services were included in the agency's contract with Conrail, and thus the railroad also never purchased any work locomotives. During this time, if maintenance or switching was needed, a standard Conrail freight or switching locomotive would just be used. In 1981, the Reagan administration suggested that Conrail's commuter operations should be under the direct control of state agencies. 
Shortly after, in 1983, the MTA created Metro North Railroad to operate commuter service. Metro North would need to take on jobs that were previously undertaken by Conrail, such as engineer and conductor training, as well as maintenance of way and switching services. So Metro North set out finding locomotives capable of doing these jobs. The railroad acquired several ex-Conrail locomotives for these roles, including three GE B23-7s, a few RS3Ms, one GP8, numbered 543, and one GP9, numbered 750. The Connecticut Department of Transportation also purchased a few RS3Ms from Conrail for use on Metro North. The GE B23-7s were leased by Conrail from GE, so when Metro North purchased them, the lease was just transferred to Metro North. The leases then expired in 1993, and the GE B23-7s were gone, and the railroad replaced them with three EMD GP35s. As the railroad looked for uniformity in their locomotive lineup, they still rostered a few old Alco RS3Ms. As the railroad looked to make their locomotive lineup more uniform, they decided to retire the Alco RS3Ms. These were slowly replaced by the GP35s throughout the 1990s. I will cover this process more in part 2 of the episode where I discuss the GP35s. So this left the railroad with one GP8 and one GP9, as well as their new fleet of GP35s. But the GP8s and GP9s could not go on forever, and they were retired in 2009 when the BL14CG was purchased. These units then sat around Croton Harmon shops without much purpose. Then the units were reactivated for switcher service in 2012, but as the GP35s went out for rebuilds, the GP8s and GP9s did not, as the railroad wanted a uniform lineup of work locomotives, and decided to replace them with newer GP35s rather than rebuild them. These two units have now sat in Croton Harmon for years and are currently listed for sale. And just like that, we are left with the roster of work locomotives that Metro North has today. I will be discussing the locomotives that replaced them, the GP35s and the BL14 CGs, in part two of this episode, which I will release three, three weeks after this episode is uploaded. So please subscribe so you don't miss it. And if you like this video, like it. And if you didn't, dislike it. That's fine too. Leave a comment for anything else, and I hope to see you in part two and anything else I do. Goodbye.